they stop working and eventually die. Like other types of damage caused by ischemia, energy loss is most noticeable in the ischemic core and less so in the penumbra. Pathophysiology of Cerebral Ischemia Focal cerebral ischemia has a difficult pathophysiology because it changes over time, affects the brain in different ways, and affects more than one type of cell. Even so, a number of possible important underlying processes have been found. Some of these are thought to happen early on in a stroke, while others are thought to happen later. Also, some routes help tissues stay alive or regenerate, while others contribute to ischemic injury. During or after brain ischemia, there are a number of things that can happen. Energy failure. Neurons use oxidative metabolism to make adenosine triphosphate because they need a lot of energy. When blood flow is low, oxygen and glucose, which are needed for this action, can't get to where they need to be. This makes ATP levels go down. Cells can make some changes by making ATP through glycolysis, but if they don't get blood quickly again, they stop working and eventually die. Like other types of damage caused by ischemia, energy loss is most noticeable in the ischemic core and less so in the penumbra. The next mechanism is about ions gradients. A major use of cellular energy is the maintenance of transmembrane ion gradients. With energy failure, the maintenance is lost. Sodium-potassium AT pays also fails. This channel is in charge of keeping high levels of potassium inside cells and uses most of the energy that neurons need. Potassium leaks out of cells, which depolarizes nearby cells, activating voltage-gated ion channels and lets neurotransmitters out of the cell. The neurotransmitter glutamate and extracellular potassium cause cortex spreading depression, which leads to additional depolarization of neurons and astrocytes. This takes more energy and could make the infarction last longer. Next is calcium deficiency. Intracellular calcium is typically kept low, but when external potassium rises because of ischemia, the membrane depolarizes and extracellular calcium flows into neurons. Catabolic enzymes are turned on, mitochondrial function is messed up, and the processes that lead to cell death are initiated. Excitotoxicity is another mechanism that occurs after cerebral ischemia. Excitotoxicity refers to the harmful effects of excitatory chemicals, like glutamate, on neurons. Ischemia causes glutamate to be released from neurons, reverses astrocytic glutamate uptake, and activates glutamate receptor-coupled ion channels. All of these things make excitotoxicity worse. Calcium influx via these channels contributes to calcium dysregulation and activates neuronal nitric oxide synthase, resulting in possibly cytotoxic nitric oxide. The next processes are damage from oxygen and nitrogen. Some of the harmful effects of ischemia are caused by highly reactive oxidative and nitrosative chemicals, like superoxide and nitric oxide, which work mostly during the reperfusion phase that comes after ischemia. Their effects include stopping the enzymes and functions of mitochondria, damaging DNA, turning on ion channels, changing proteins covalently, and turning on cell death pathways. Let's look at cell death cascades now. Ischemic cell death occurs most rapidly in the infarct core and more slowly in the penumbra and during reperfusion. Rapid cell death involves necrosis, which is characterized by early mitochondrial and cell swelling, rupture of the plasma membrane with release of cell contents, and inflammation. Whereas more slowly or programmed cell death, also known as apoptosis, predominates in the penumbra and during reperfusion. Apoptosis is cell death determined by transcription of specific genes and subsequent protein synthesis. The DNA is fragmented into characteristic lengths leading to DNA laddering on gels. There is a condensation of chromatin at the edge of the nucleus, the formation of aptotic bodies, blebbing of the cell membrane, and splitting of the cell, but the integrity of the mitochondria and cell membrane is preserved. There is no inflammation. The cell dies and is phagocytosed by macrophages. The final process in cerebral ischemia is inflammation. An inflammatory response including both local and blood-borne innate immune system cells results from cerebral ischemia. Local immune system responses include astrocytes and microglia, whereas blood-borne innate immune system responses include neutrophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. Adaptive immune responses start to show up later in the process. Some of the molecular mediators of ischemia-induced inflammation include adhesion molecules, cytokines, chemokines, and proteases. Despite the fact that the early inflammatory reaction to ischemia exacerbates harm, later inflammatory episodes may be neuroprotective or aid in regeneration. I created videos on neurology and neuroscience. Please subscribe if you want to stay updated.